Welcome to a new course vlog in which today I'll be taking you through the back nine of Bukit Jalil Golf and Country Club. Bukit Jalil is not a golf course that I play very often. I feel like we've only played one tournament here when I was a kid, which was the KL Amateur Open. And since then, I rarely come here. So let's see how we can navigate our way through this golf course today. Right off the bat, I think you can see here, I was pretty close to the bunker down the left side and I didn't hit that great of a tee shot. This was also the first shot of the day. So if I were to play this hole again, I would definitely be hitting something more like a 3 wood to give myself a better lie and a better angle going into the screen. As you can tell by the waterlogged bunkers as well, it has been raining a lot. So we're going to be expecting some pretty receptive greens, I would think. I aimed it a little bit too far right, probably as a result of the awkward stance that I had. A lot of times when the ball is above my feet, I tend to have a tendency to aim too far right, especially as a draw player. I think because I feel like the ball is going to curve more towards the left, I do have a tendency to aim too far to the right. So definitely something to pay attention to. But we did manage to get a point on the first hole. So let's move on to the second hole, which is a par 5. From what I can remember, this is a dog leg left par 5 and there is a bunker somewhere out there but we can't really tell from the tee box so I wasn't able to shoot how far the bunker was. So therefore I was kind of aiming for that building out in the distance and I didn't really know I was out there so hopefully giving myself a good angle for the second shot. Clearly not the best contact there of the tee, so fortunately though, sometimes when you miss it enough, you're going to still end up being in an okay enough position. So you can see there's nothing blocking me here except that the rough that I was in, the lie wasn't very great. And it's also kind of that cow grass kind of ruly lie, so I felt like a wood was going to not really be able to get through it that much. So I just came with my 5 iron here, which ended up leaving me with a much longer approach shot into the screen than I should be having. But when you don't hit a good shot off the tee, you just kind of want to get yourself back in play. So we still have a chance to go for the green here in 3, and that's what's most important. Going for 5 iron here, and the pin is kind of tucked left, so we're just trying to get this towards the center of the green. Trying to play these first two holes very conservatively because it's very wet and I haven't warmed up yet, but so far, it's not been too great. I missed two greens. Um, so, time to be a little bit more aggressive after I save power on this hole. So next up we have the 12 hole which is a dog leg left par 4. To be honest, I did not feel like this should be a driver tee shot because if you go out towards the right side, you can run out of fairway. However, because like you saw in the previous clip, I told myself I was going to start being a little bit more aggressive because I was trying to play quite conservative on the first few holes because I didn't really know what the course was going to be playing like. And as you could tell, it was not really working out for me. So I still decided to pull out the driver here and we will see if that was a smart decision or not. I wanted to draw it. Too aggressive, guys. Too aggressive. So after hitting two weak cuts on the first two holes, obviously the tendency, seeing that I couldn't miss that hole right, was to try and turn it over too much, which left me in this bunker here. It is not the worst position, however, I'm still trying to navigate my way through this course. You can tell that this sand is very, very firm. So I'm trying to take a bit more club here because I felt like it was going to be a bit cakey. So just trying to make good solid contact. So 
so I hit pretty decently there but you can see it still came up short what I meant by cakey in the previous clip if you don't really understand what I said was kind of like you know when the sand is wet but it was like wet overnight and they haven't really rigged it so the bottom is going to be soft but the top looks firm so and that usually takes out a lot of distance especially if you catch it pretty decently so that's why I took more club and you can tell that it was still not enough but yeah, that's something you need to pay attention to, especially when the bunkers are wet. It's always going to be very, very difficult to judge what's going to happen out of that. So anyway, we still managed to save the par. So let's move on to the next hole, which is hole 13, a par 3 playing pretty short. So we've just got a pitching wedge here. The pin is tucked pretty far left though. So it is not an easy hole just because it's short. It is definitely one that makes you very tempted to go for the pin. Let's just say that. <laughs> I hit a pretty decent shot but it did end up kicking left so you can tell there's a slope there as I said this green is not the easiest if the depending on where the pin is it can definitely be tricky even though it's short so this was my birdie attempt here I thought I hit a pretty decent putt but obviously just did not have any break and yeah just a little tap in par here so let's move on to the next hole which is going to be another par 4 this is a bit of an uphill par 4 so it's a kind of funny hole where there is a cart path somewhere up there i don't know how far it's going to be from this tee box but i figured that if worst to worst case if i hit the cart path it's just gonna go forward so just aiming it out towards the building there the lone building and just giving it a rip So after the tee shot, here you can see the car path that I mentioned before. Um, not in a bad position and on a bit of an uphill slope in the rough. So I was expecting this ball to go a little bit left. So it's one of those things where if you can carry the car path, you're going to be leaving yourself in a pretty simple spot. And if you can't, you might want to prefer hitting a three wood of the tee box because that will give you a lie from the fairway, which is what I'm having right now. But then again, I'm only hitting a 54 degree wedge, so I know that worst case scenario, it's not going to be that bad. But if it's not something that you're comfortable with hitting off slopes, you might want to dial back a little bit just to give yourself a shot from the fairway. Because it's always going to be easier to predict what something's going to be doing off the fairway than off the rough. So this was my birdie putt here. As you can tell, I am clearly way misreading the greens so I'm giving it way too much break. I'm not sure if it's the grain that's pulling it or I'm just seeing a lot of break today when there isn't any. But that's alright, we're moving on to the next hole which is another par 4 and this par 4 is a bit of a dog leg left and it's going to be a little bit of a downhill hole. Not too much of the tee but of the second shot. From the tee box you can't really see where the green is going to be but there is a bunker out there on the right side and there is a sort one on the left side as well but the right side one is pretty far compared to the left side one so I would recommend aiming more towards that right bunker unless you can reach it of which case I would just hit something that's going to be short of those bunkers and that should leave you in a pretty good position. So I left myself in a good spot here, as you can see a bit too close to the bunker for my liking though. So like I said, if it's if the bunker is going to be in your way, I would recommend just hitting something shorter because like you can see from here, I've only got about 128 yards. So it's not going to be a super long hole anyway, so just getting yourself in the fairway would be a good position to be. So over here, just going with the pitching wedge. Hit a good approach shot straight at the pin but there is quite a bit of slope on these greens and the greens are playing quite firm today even though it was raining so it was a bit of a surprise but you definitely need to know which way the greens are breaking because I still left myself with a decent length part here even though I hit that directly at the pin and it just kicked left so yeah it would definitely be a benefit to know which way the greens are sloping out here.
having a little laugh here just because Joey was wanting to have a little match and of course I drain apart when she says that so anyway let's move on to hole 16 which is a par 3 this is playing 153 yards uphill it's a pretty tricky one like I said the greens were playing firm today so I was trying to get this towards the front of the green because if I were to play the distance I knew that I was gonna have a pretty tricky downhill putt So I hit a decent shot but I didn't get it past that slope there so it just rolled back down off the front of the green. So I had this chip here from the bottom which is a pretty slow chip just cause it's going into the green and also of course it's an uphill chip. But like I said I feel like that was a better option than giving myself that tricky downhill putt anyway so this was my putt for par. Managed to save that and moving on to the next hole which is a par 5. So this par 5 is pretty tricky. Because we are not used to playing on this golf course, we didn't really know what's left past those little bushes down there. There is water hazard running through it, but it seems like there wasn't much room towards the left side. So our aim here was kind of towards that building, the complex that I'm blocking with my body right now, but that's right in the center, as you can tell right here. So that was kind of what our target was going to be because that bunker on the right is reachable, but we didn't feel like we had much space left. So I got pretty unlucky here. My ball carried that bunker and then took a weird bounce like backwards and then left me in this weird lie so I didn't have much of a stance and there was a whole bunch of rough in front of me so I needed to get something with enough height to clear that. So I was just trying to get as long of an iron as I could while still being able to make contact with the ball over here which I knew I was probably going to have to grip down all the way down to the shaft so as you can see here I was also contemplating just taking a wedge and punching it out left to put myself on the fairway because of how bad the lie was but yeah I just decided to just go with my 7 iron here and just try to punch this as hard as I could Ow! The shaft like shaking in my so you can see here still not in a good position you can't even see my ball that's how thick the rough was in front of me and that's why i was considering chipping it left but i mean either way i wasn't going to be able to get on the green anymore so right now i'm just trying to get this as far as i possibly can again as you can see it's not a good lie so obviously the main takeaway here is there's actually a lot of room down the left side so ideally you want to take it down the left side left of those bunkers if not just hit something right and hit it short of those bunkers because that is not a good spot to be in So we've reached the last hole at even par, so let's see if we can make a birdie to finish this 9 under. This tee shot, if you can carry the bunker on the right side, that's something you can do. If not, there is a ton of space on the left side. If you have a range finder, obviously just shoot those trees and make sure that you're choosing a target where you're not going to run out of fairway and then you have a pretty simple shot from there. After my tee shot, I left myself with 115 yards. The pin was in front today, so I knew that I kind of had to carry it all the way there. So especially with a little bit of this elevation as well, it was probably playing closer to about 120, but again, trying to leave myself with uphill parts here because I feel like on these greens, those downhillers can be pretty tricky. So I managed to do exactly what I wanted to, which was leave myself on the green with an uphill putt. So this was my last attempt on this 9 for a birdie.
Unfortunately, a bit aggressive there, but I think I gave myself a good roll there, so we'll walk away with that even power round. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.